Okay, so we've just uh, set up AA, connected all the equipment, synchronized our first image to Altair. That was after a very rough point in the sky, just to show how good uh, AA's or Estrobot's plate solving capabilities are. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to uh, our first object, which is M27. Uh, press go to. And we can actually click over to the move tab to see just how far away we are. Slowing to target and um, we can have a look at these coordinates here. This has to reach up to around about 22 degrees or rather 22 hours in uh, declination before we're really close and this is usually around 1959 so we're getting very close now that should be almost it. Slowing to target is now finished back to telescope control we take an image to see how close we are And we can see from that that M27 is on the screen, uh, but it does need some adjusting. So, tools, find coordinates for this particular image. So Astroar tries to plate solve that image. And it didn't actually do it on that occasion, so I'm going to use a slightly longer exposure. give it some more stars to play with. Uh, find coordinates from this image. Okay. Okay, so that seems to have worked straight away, north and east. It's found what it was looking for. So now we synchronize to the image. Synchronize to the last image. That means synchronize to the last calibrated image. And we know that this is calibrated. So we sync to that image. We then say go to this object, which is M27 and hopefully it will make the small adjustment to get this star um, in the center. Slowing to target, as you can see from that. Once that stops saying that, telescope control, that's when it's finished. Uh, take another image. And then see how close we are. Okay, so we're really close this time. And again, for the final tweak, what I prefer to do is uh, press control and the numeric 5, the central uh, number 5 on the keypad or rather on the keyboard to bring up this very central and symmetrical uh, rectangle then press control and plus also on the right hand side of the keyboard to just um, make that larger. I'm trying to encompass this star here so that when I start my centering I'll push that to the middle and that should hopefully um, get us where we need to go. So we then we then we can then run a live focus. Uh, we've set this to three by three. This is a very faint star. So what I like to do is to just uh, extend the exposure a little bit, just so that we can make that star a bit brighter. That will also bring some other stars into play as well, but that won't be a problem. We then move over to the uh, the move telescope move controls and we can increase this value a little bit. These are step seconds, so every time I press one of these buttons it will move in that direction at guide rate for that many seconds. So obviously you may want this value quite large to start off with, but then you want to make it smaller as you get closer and closer to uh, the intended position. So probably one more click on that should do it. Let's see where we are after that. And there we go, that's close enough. Close that window. Uh, get rid of that by clicking inside the window. Take a new image, so just a quick five second image, M27. It's still pretty bright outside though, it's not going to be very contrasty at the moment, uh, but it's just to get us roughly where we need to be. And there we go, that central star is right on the crosshairs, so that would be good enough to start our, uh, our processing. And what we need to do next is we need to go to the Go To tab, and we do a Sync 
but this time not to the image we actually sync it to M27 because we know that we're on M27 now right in the middle so the telescope and astro art and this image are all calibrated towards each other uh, should we need to move to another object the last part of this process before I start imaging is to select a relatively bright star uh, ideally something in the center of the screen but if there isn't one which there isn't in this case I'll, I'll use either this one here or this one uh, set the binning down to 2x2 two two. focus and then I can use this really nice uh, auto focuser feature I'm using a lakeside controller and what we can do here is we can go to the auto focus tab set a step size in other words how far it's going to move in between each increment and then just click on start and what Astro Art does, it then pushes the focuser all the way in at 15 steps, sorry, 15 movements or increments and it will do this for 7 positions and it will take 6 exposures for each iteration it then assigns uh, a value of focus to each of those and the highest of those values will be the one that wins and the one that it refocuses back on Obviously, the larger the step size is, the more um, the more of a sort of a region or a width that you can play with. You know, usually this figure will be quite large at the start of a session um, if you if you're completely out of focus because you know you won't know which way you're moving. But as you get closer and closer towards focus, you can reduce this to you know really small numbers. I like to keep it around about 10 or 15 because as the temperature changes through the night. Uh, you do find that you have to make uh, further adjustments so that should be that and that's a relatively well focused star there for, for what I'm used to seeing so I close that now I would just take another image just to make sure that the setup is still good and that we're still centered the way we want it to be yeah that's okay that's fine obviously there's going to get a little bit of left and right movement on the RA axis just due to uh, periodic error and there's a lot of periodic error on my mount and in the next video I'll be showing you how we use uh, Starlight Express's adaptive optics uh, along with AstroArt's guiding software to get round the problems that we do have when we're trying to do long exposures uh, I'm going to take a few um, just 10 second exposures here now just to sort of show um, how bad really uh, my mount is you know compared to some that I've seen anyway and uh, hopefully this will show up on even on just 10 second exposures so here we go we're coming to the end of the first 10 second exposure now and um, there's a, quite a bit of trailing in there that I can see so they're not very nice stars at all. Let's take another one. Again, just 10 seconds for the sake of what we're doing here. That one doesn't look as bad, to be honest. Oh yeah, it's still quite bad. And then what we can do in Astro Art is we can actually just mouse over one of these stars and select it and in the bottom of the screen there, these numbers that you're going to see jiggling around when your cursor goes over it uh, it does give you a full width half maximum on the star, so at the moment mine are reading 3.9 and 3 so if we call that 3.94 then basically proportionally uh, it's out by 25% because it's, well that's actually it's not, it's 33% it's isn't it, it's, it's 4 over 3 so uh, that would equate to stars that are really uh, poor in roundness and they're going to be a lot wider than what they need to be and again this is down to the movement um, in the mount and I'll just do one more quick exposure while we've got a few seconds left in this video and then what we'll do in the next video is we'll move on to actually guiding uh, and showing you how Astro Art and Starlight Express's adaptive optics work together to get us around this problem so again, some spludgy stars there as we can see, and the next video we'll get round that.